Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Mentor Asia Pacific. I'm Alvin Songan, and who do we got here today? Hey, man? what's we... up? It's me, AJ Raphael. All right, all right. Here guys. on Guam. Here on Guam, one more time. Let's brother, go. Right? We're here on Come Guam. on, here so on Guam. It's been three, three, four, four no, five, five years. Six, five seven. years. I'm, I'm the math teacher, and I'm getting the dates. Come on, right? 2014. <laughs> no, I, I, it was summer 2014. Summer 2014. So it okay. was, um, yeah, almost. It's almost gonna be five years. Almost five years. Yeah. Welcome back, brother. How Thank you, been? man. It's been good, you know. Uh, I know we, we talked about this earlier, but it's really just like the warmth of the people. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, obviously we made a lot of friends last time we were here. So seeing those same people brings back those same memories and the same fun and the same. The welcome has been so amazing, man. Like just wa- like going into like Shirley's Coffee House mm-hmm. and meeting some fans who work there and yeah. stuff. Like, dude, it's yeah, I love being here. Guam. Right on, right on, yeah. right on. So, uh, what are you here in Guam for? What are you, what are you doing here? At the uh, we are here for Tumon Bay Music Festival, um, playing this Sunday. Um, so yeah, I'm just playing a, sh- a set. Um, I'm a featured guest, which is really, really great. Um, so I'm just glad that there was an opportunity to come back. Um, my, our friend CJ, she contacted me like not even a month mm-hmm. for the um, it to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she made it happen, and I was like, cool, I'm free. Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna do another plug for CJ on that one. We, yeah. CJ, I interviewed her a few episodes back, mm-hmm. yep. and she's the one that kind of brought AJ to us. Yeah. So we're gonna thank AJ, uh, CJ again for that, man. Totally. It's it's one of those things where it's like you know the relationships you create with people, mm-hmm. they trust you, yeah. right? Um, and and CJ was like, hey, there's this music festival. I didn't question it once. I was just mm-hmm. like, that sounds cool. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Breaking Waves Theater Company is also gonna be putting on a show in a few weeks. Yes. Um, yes. Go time. watch it. Yeah. Support live theater. Especially, it's like an independent theater, you know what I mean? And CJ's working hard, and uh, it's going to be amazing. All right, so we're going to kind of jump into your story, brother. Um, We, some of the fans here know what your story is. Yeah, um, yeah. Where you started off with music, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. your trajectory with social media. Sure. um, MySpace, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. Um, Let's let's talk about that, man. Yeah. Jump back to maybe MySpace and then yeah. go from there. Man. Sure, MySpace was a very interesting time because this is the beginning of kind of social media to the masses, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone had profiles and stuff. And you know, I before MySpace music came out, I, I had to put on a song that I wrote via like real player HTML code, mm-hmm. right? So um, it's kind of untouched territory. Mm-hmm. And I had just have a play button on, on the, on the profile page to have people just press play. I'm like, hey, keep pressing play. I don't even know how many times it's been played. It's mm-hmm. just, I hope people like the music or whatever. Next thing you know, I am um, playing backyard shows uh, around my high school and stuff, mm-hmm. and people are singing along to the song, you know? And I'm like, wow, this is very cool, you know? Um, and then my space music comes along and I start uploading more tracks and you can play songs and people can add the song to your mm-hmm. page and yeah. stuff, you know? And all of this was so new at the time, man. I, looking back, I didn't really have a strategy. Mm-hmm. I was just taking advantage of the platform. Okay. And I was like, okay, here's something. I can, I can upload stuff for free. Okay. People can create a free profile. Mm-hmm. Why not use it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I signed up for everything at that time. And then there was this one website called YouTube. I uploaded a video and uploaded a few more. Mm-hmm. Um, and those were really just for my MySpace. Okay. I was like, let me upload this so I can put on my MySpace profile, you know, it's easy to like embed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as that started kind of rolling, I found out there was a thing called subscribers. I had a thousand of them. I was like, whoa, this is cool. This is free, you know, and just kept rolling, bro. You know what I mean? Like you just have to like kind of go down the rabbit hole, you know, and just be like, if it's working, I'm down. Okay. So you're talking about YouTube, man. Um, What do you feel is the difference in YouTube like now versus to when you started on it? Oh man, tons, tons of different things. Right now, you do have to look at it as a strategy, right? At the end of the day, especially in this day and age, consistency always wins, Mm -hmm. bad or good quality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But as artists and and maybe someone like you who cares about quality, it's hard to find the balance, right? Because we could spend forever on a shot, on a certain light, Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, the people who are faster than you are gonna get more views, yeah. right? Like that, this, that's the kind of, it's the pros and cons of, of doing this whole YouTube thing. Um, back then it was just kind of like, man, I, I used a laptop. 
I put a laptop on there and yeah. jammed with my friends yeah, and yeah. people are like, we love this. This is so cool. They felt like they're jamming, you know, mm -hmm. to an extent, a lot of people still love that, yeah. but the quality has to be mm -hmm. insane. And as far as like even picture quality, uh, sound quality, you know, um, but then there's also like Facebook that breaks that again. Yeah. And it goes back to the beginnings of yeah. YouTube mm -hmm. where it's just iPhone videos. Yep. So man, it's just, it could all change tomorrow. True, 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 true. But at the end of the day, you gotta like also look at it. Um, it's, it's a big robot. Mm -hmm. It's a whole algorithm thing. You know what I mean? So you have to just kind of play the game mm -hmm. in a way, um, which maybe as an artist, especially me, like I'm not a, I'm not naturally a business person or anything. I'm just like, let me do what my heart tells me. So it, it's hard because if I'm just doing what my heart tells me, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get to play the the rules of, of, of the game. Mm -hmm. and, and then YouTube is not putting me at the top of the search results and things like that. So it's, it's, there's, there's certain compromise, mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you gotta just kind of I don't know, roll with it, bro. So a, lot, a lot of technicalities. That you're it is, about. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks because I just want to create art, yeah. you know? So what, what I've been noticing with um, some of your stuff right now is you're doing a lot of collabs. Yeah. And and that's kind of, I guess that's, that's your roots, you know? Playing, yeah, yeah. Playing with that. Totally. Um, coming and living on Guam, I, I think that, that speaks a lot about what some of the people are doing here is um, a lot of the methods that we've been trying to do is like, you know, collab with people, get your name out there. And also is to build community. Like, yeah. what, do you, what do you feel about like building that kind of community? Yeah, man. I always say, so consistency is one of the things I try to tell people. Mm -hmm. um, the second one is community, mm -hmm. uh, where it's it's a community that you you make online. I'm, I'm referring more to the online community. Okay. So yeah. like, you know, commenting back to the people who keep coming back to your pages and stuff and talking to them at the end of the videos. The third one is collaboration. And yeah, as you said, that's the roots of my channel, jamming with friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, in music in general, um, like collaborating with people and jamming with them mm -hmm. is like one of the most powerful things because you, a video can be totally different if even one more person is in there adding their guitar riffs or whatever it is, their voices. So um, collaboration, man, is like so important. And it doesn't matter like who's bigger than who, you know, like you're always, there's always gonna be someone new watching your video if somebody else is in it, mm -hmm. helping giving you that perspective uh, that you may not have on whatever it is you're creating. So. Yeah, man, it's it's very very important to me, man. And even even live, right? Like I brought my guitar player here to Guam. It's mm -hmm. like I could have come alone for sure, but I was like, man, nah. It's fun to watch two people on stage. Yeah. You know, it's fun to watch two people in in a YouTube video. We're bouncing mm -hmm. off each other. You yeah. know, so. Right, all right. So um, collabs, doing all these things, man. Um, and YouTube. So where what are some of the struggles that you might have had, like you know, post YouTube, and then you know kind of where you're at right now, what struggles, you know, you took a hiatus yeah. somewhere there. What were yeah. some of the struggles you might have had? So like when it comes to struggles, like there's haters, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is maybe struggling with being consistent. Okay. So then you, if you miss a week, you're like, oh, I'll just miss the next week. And mm -hmm. you kind of yep. get lazy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, another struggle is working too hard, okay. overworking yourself, you know, as, as artists and people who do creative stuff we almost forget that we need breaks, you know? I, I like my girlfriend, she has um, a corporate job, right? Where she has hours, you know, she's on salary, um, but she gives herself a break, yeah. right? And she has these vacation days that she plans out. And she's like, hey, from this point to this point, we're going to Hawaii, we're gonna enjoy it. And she doesn't get to think about work, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, for us, it's hard because um, if we're think, thinking about social media all the time, mm -hmm. it's ever changing, yes. you know? It always changes, so you wanna keep up, you wanna keep up, but you forget that you're a human being and mm -hmm. your brain works the same as somebody who is, say, training for a sport. Yeah. You know, like, if you are constantly rehearsing, practicing, and, and, and making content, mm -hmm you're still gonna be tired, man. So I was working from 2004 to 2014, and I was just like, I need a break. So I stopped playing uh, shows. Mm -hmm. Would barely post on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So 2014, um, and one of my last shows, I had three last shows. Mm -hmm. Philippines, Guam, and San Diego. Okay. Yeah, so Guam is, is a special place for me mm -hmm. because that was one of those stops where I was like, dude, if this is the one of the last shows I play, this amazing reception. Okay. Everybody was so loving, you know, and and that's the thing too is like when you're chasing 
some, I, th I know like a lot of people in this day and age and we see numbers, right? We see the likes, the views and stuff like that. We're always chasing, 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 mm -hmm. you know? And I think one cool thing about playing live and, and also just being content with what you do is when you see somebody who's been moved by your content, mm -hmm. you know, say this, like somebody watches, even if it's one person, mm -hmm. right? Who watches your Mentor Mondays and they're like, yo man, this taught me a lot. This changed the trajectory of my journey. Mm -hmm. Then you've done your job. True. You know what I mean? So I really feel that way with my, uh, with my music and, and, and my journey and stuff. And I think I had to take that break to, okay. to know that, um, to realize that stuff, That's you know, and I'm older too now. So, yeah. so I like that, man. You, you talked about that, you know, everybody needs to take a break, kind of hit, hit that reset. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to guess that you're not in a, kind of in a different mindset now rather than you know, doing that hustle those first. Yeah, 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 for sure. So what, what's like your mission like now? What, what's your yeah. music going to be all about now? That's cool. Um, yeah, definitely that grind and hustle, man. You know, every time I think about it, I'm like, how did I do that? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I try to bring it back. I do this thing on my YouTube channel called January. I did it for two years. So last year I uploaded every day in January. Okay. This year I upload every other day. Mm -hmm. So I still try to like do these kind of binges in a way mm -hmm. to like keep myself on the edge. Mm -hmm. um, but like as, as far as my mindset now, yeah. like you were mentioning, I'm almost 30. So, I, you know, I was always thinking like, I want to do all these things before mm -hmm. I'm 30, you know? But in the last couple of years, I was just like, dude, I just want to do what makes me happy, man. And that sounds like very cliche. And, and so many people probably have said that to every single person, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see it on TV, like just do what makes you happy. And, Obviously it's easier said than done, mm -hmm. but I still am, that's what I've been living off of the last three, four years, you know, where it's like the money I have, um, the, the possessions and stuff, you know, you gotta look at those things and be like, is this enough, you know, mm -hmm. and not keep wanting to chase more like I was saying earlier. Um, yeah, man, if I'm happy in five years, dude, that's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal, man. Yeah. And and it's relative. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You know, I think everybody thinks they need certain things that maybe the media or co our culture in general mm -hmm. puts on a pedestal. Yeah. Like you need you need money. You need a big big house. You yeah. need a car. And these things are very nice and stuff. Um, but as you know, right here, dude. Mm -hmm. That's like what really really matters. And it. That's like the last three, four years for me realizing yeah. stuff like that. So, so you're, you're finding your purpose is that, yeah. that that's what's kind of left to. Yeah, totally. Okay, so there's, there's going to be a lot of kids, um, all even young adults watching this and, and they're looking for their purpose. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are trying to find their music mm -hmm. right now. Um, what kind of advice would you, would you give them? Like somebody that's starting out like, you know, sometimes I feel it's kind of counterintuitive to me, you know, to say, to start. Sure. Some of them already have started or sure, you know, sure, start sure. playing stuff on YouTube. Like, you know, yeah. Sometimes they're like, well, I'm not ready for a camera. In my face. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. like, what, what bits of advice do you give them? It's, it's tough because there's a whole section of people who are not embracing the internet. And obviously somebody like me who makes a living doing that and, um, and monetizes myself in, in a way where, you know, I'm able to just be a content creator slash musician slash, you know, I really... Um, I, I endorse like accepting the internet, yep. you know, as, as a platform, this is like, like the internet has changed the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of people who are like, eh, I don't do YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like start a channel, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be discouraging at first because people want the views and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but if you have something too, that, um, that you're just proud of, like, for example, like I, I have some music videos that didn't perform as well as some of these other music videos, but I'm like, um, you know, I spent some money on these videos and even though they didn't perform as well, I'm like proud of these videos. So if somebody's asking me like, hey, show me like your favorite videos or a reel, mm -hmm. or it ends up becoming an extension of my resume True. of my work, right? So I'm putting it out there and there's gonna be, there's a one in a million chance your, your video goes viral, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why you have to create consistent content. So you have, all this stuff that people can look at and be like, oh, this is AJ's body of work, mm -hmm. you know, and not just like try to make a viral thing. And if it doesn't, then yeah. you get discouraged, you know? You know? That one and done and yeah, 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 exactly, man. And you got to keep going if that happens, you know? So I don't know, man. I, I think 
uh, you want to stay on top of things, but at the same time, you know, your fans will be, and I'll talk music specifically since that's my lane. Like, if I'm doing a cover song of a very, very popular song, and people, uh, people will, especially if they know your content and all your videos, they'll see that you might not be as genuine as if you're doing a song that you love. Yes. You know what I mean? So there, there is also like a balance where it's like, I'll do the the big Ariana Grande song, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, if, if I'm just forcing it, yeah. you know, people can tell, mm -hmm. you know, especially if, um, when you cr start creating that relationship with your with your audience and your community and they know what kind of content you have, you know, um, and also be opening to or be open to kind of pivoting as well, you know, taking a, a different turn than something that you're doing. If say you have like your base content and you have everything that you're doing, say weekly or whatever, and you do another thing, it's like maybe a bonus video or whatever, and that does well. Be open to maybe changing and having that as your base yeah, content, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of things that are gonna change um, weekly, monthly, yearly, because the crowd and the people, yeah. like they really control, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like if everyone stopped watching my videos tomorrow, you know, I had to do something different. Yeah. So um, I know that was like a ton of no, no, no. advice, but like, Go with your heart at the same time, uh, be open to change, mm -hmm. and, and maybe when, when the universe or God or whatever you believe in is kind of putting you in another direction, you know, it's like, hey, let's, let's roll with this for a yeah. while. It's, it's online. You can erase your, you can delete your video. Mm -hmm. You know, you can upload, delete, you can experiment. You're like, oh, this does better this day because my fans know to come on Mondays. Yep. Right, you know what I mean? And like all these things that you can experiment with and it's gonna take some time. Well, yep. That's the thing I think that people get frustrated. They're like, I tried doing a vlog channel, but you know, it didn't really hit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But um, yeah, the hard, the hard work will pay off and people will, will see like, yep. see that, man. Yep. For me, I, I think it's, it's just the, the platform for like YouTube or anything I got is digitally online and sometimes showing your growth you know, people growing with you is, is what, people, what, what people get excited totally, about. Totally, man. It's kind of like, you know, I saw this guy in MySpace. I saw this guy in Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on YouTube, took mm -hmm. a break, and now he's back. And, right. You know. So then when you do kind of crazy extreme things like taking a break, they're still following you and seeing what's up, you know, and they're not just like, oh, well, he's not coming out. He's not coming out with music, so I'm going to unfollow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I had a, a big example of this uh, when I played the first day I came to uh, Guam yesterday, um, I played in middle school and I, was, I, got, I received a drawing mm -hmm. and I gave it to CJ real quick. I barely looked at it. I was like, thank you for the drawing. Um, later after my performance, we do a Q&A and everyone's asking these questions. What's your favorite color? How do you, you know, what's your advice, songwriting, mm -hmm. all these things. Mm -hmm. And then asking about my music, of course, and my journey and then at the end, this girl who just raises her hand, she's like, hey, come, um, I want to come up. And principal let her go up, even though we were done. Mm -hmm. And she said, hey, AJ, um, how do you deal with losing a family member or somebody close to you? And everyone was just like quiet. And I was like, oh, you must know that my, my father passed away when I was 10. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. And so I was telling her, you know, all this advice, basically like, you know, gives you extra reason to make that person proud and become, be a better person. So when you see him again, and then I go in the car and I look at the drawing and uh, it's signed Lily. And that was the name of that girl. Okay. And the drawing is literally me. And she drew my dad hugging me as an angel. And I was like, so it's not just even my music. Mm -hmm. It's like what's happened on my personal journey mm -hmm. and my life and how I've dealt with it. You know what I mean? So it, it can be more than the, just that and that people end up becoming a fan of you as a person and not just the thing you're creating, yes, yep. you know, and, content. and that's, you know, to, to what you're saying about the journey and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's why people love following like vloggers and stuff mm -hmm. and like people who open up and, sh and let them in yep. because at the end of the day, people just want to like connect, not in like a networky way, mm -hmm. but like connect to other people yep. and relate to them. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love the whole journey thing because that's what we watch for yep. and we do that for, not necessarily like, 
yeah, it's like it's about the journey and not the what, the not destination, the right? Yeah. yeah. So, and you can, and it's literally you can see it all on fa on YouTube. Yeah, you could, you could. It's all in the videos, and you you watch and you subscribe, and you receive another one. And you're like, whoa, he's yeah. he's doing this now, you know, when he used to do this. So, um, I'm a big fan of of the platform in general that has allowed it's changed my life, you know, and it's brought me to places like Guam, yeah. Philippines, Australia, man, and where people are just a fan of not only what I do, but of, of me, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about, we talked about the destination, you know, and the journey. Mm, yep. So let's let's project a little, man, for, for you, and you know, kind of to preview for your viewers as well. Five, 10 years down the line, what, what do mm. you see yourself doing now? What's, what's next? So, um, even though I've been doing the thing that everybody knows me for, my music and creating content, um, I've been venturing out into theater as well. So finding those passions, mm -hmm. even though it all falls under the umbrella of performing, mm -hmm. entertainment, music, um, finding those little things that make you even more excited, mm -hmm. you know, and for, for a while there, and another reason I was doing, you know, the hiatus is like, I kind of was getting tired of just doing the same thing. You know, even though it brought joy to so many people and that helped me, helped motivate me. But um, when I found theater again, because I did in high school and college, um, I was so happy, man. And I just, uh, I did, I just came from doing a show. Um, I was in a show, uh, in a production of Tarzan. Okay. And uh, I played Turk, the best friend. And it was just so fun. And all my friends were like, dude, you look so happy doing it. You know, so right now I, I have told myself, um, that I was gonna take theater seriously this mm -hmm. year, you know, and I was I wanted to do something that kind of scared me in a way mm -hmm. and challenged me yeah. because I Know that I am good at what I do music wise, yeah. you know, I can play a show entertain the crowd play piano mm -hmm. well because of because of rehearsals and mm -hmm. and honing my craft same with guitar and stuff um, but when it comes to acting and doing this thing that makes me uncomfortable and nervous you know, I like encourage everybody to challenge themselves in, yep. in different ways, mm -hmm. you know, in, in whatever way they can. And that'll keep you, I don't know, just excited, yep. more excited for life, you know. So theater is that, that outlet for me. So uh, in five years, dude, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll have made my Broadway debut, man, at that time. You know, and it's um, all of this stuff sounds crazy, too. What we were talking about earlier, the YouTube stuff. I mean, my success story is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, there was this um, teacher at one of the schools who was like, hey, I want you to tell the kids that, um, I want you to tell the kids like, that there's some things that you might want to do that are not probable and that you need a backup plan and stuff, you know? And I was like, that's hard for me to say. Because say I'm, from a, I'm from a small town mm -hmm. in California, Merno Valley. It's in the Inland Empire. No one's come out of there, really, who are, you know, famous or whatever, who have, who have made it out, yeah. you know? Um, so if it's probable for me, it's yeah. probable for these kids too, True. you know? So yeah. like, you gotta keep chasing the, the dream. And there are moments, of course, where I'm like, I gotta choose the more stable thing, mm -hmm. right? I gotta maybe do um, the more paying, the better paying thing, yeah. even if it's not exactly, True. you know, letting me express myself mm -hmm. and be free, you know? and take this job over this job, you're gonna have those moments for sure because you you need to take care of yourself, yeah. right? I bet eventually, maybe in five years I'll be married, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, have kids, and I gotta think of them as well. Uh, but don't let that, you know, we're, we're all humans, man. We have passions mm -hmm. and love for different things, bro. So, um, yeah, I just wanna be happy in five years, uh, but I, I see myself, I'm visualizing myself on Broadway. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, man, that, was, that kind of rang to me when you were talking about that teacher and they said that because I was, I'm in that position where I, I give those types of pieces of advice when I was teaching in the high school and it, it was always hard for me to, to give that plan B talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to think about, you know, you know that, that might not be the route you sure, should go. Sure, 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 um, sure. Especially for me, I'm, I'm an academic mm -hmm. and so I was like, you know, I'm doing something else right now. Right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still fulfilling another side oh, of your brain. Yeah. I feel you, man. And it's not that to not have a plan B. Like, even someone like me, who maybe people don't think I have a plan B, but my plan B is still with, with music, right? Like, I still have a job. When I was on my hiatus, 
I was musical directing for musicals. So I'm playing piano, teaching parts and stuff, and that has to do with my skill, yep. right? So the skill that you have too as a, as a teacher and the math teacher and stuff, that is stuff that will always be there for us, you know? But also, on, on the other hand, if there's an opportunity for you to do something like, you got the weekends free to do this stuff, right? Or, or whenever you do, and if that fulfills you as well, do that, yeah. right? So I feel you, there's, there's a balance always, man. And, and of course, it, it is gonna take some of those crazy people to like, like a Steve Jobs or something, mm -hmm. you know, who's just building Apple out of his garage, yeah. right? Never thought that it was gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know? There are gonna be those people. There's gonna be the, the middle people who have both of those mm -hmm. things. There's gonna be just the stable people mm -hmm. who want stability and never do anything different, you know? And that's fine too. You know, everyone has their own kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. But if there's something itching you know, in the you know in the back of your head and you just like you just gotta do it, man. Scratch it, dude. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Scratch that itch, man. This is an example yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. I, I I believe, bro. So right, right on. So um, we're gonna kind of preview what you're gonna be doing for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. So talk about what you're gonna be doing tomorrow, just to cool. recap it, and yeah. then um. Maybe preview when you're gonna come back to Guam. Right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so Tumon, uh, Tumon, Tumon, is Tumon? that it? Tumon, yep. Tumon Bay Music Festival. Um, I'm playing March 3rd, and this might have already happened when this comes out. Um, so I, I would have played with my friend Andrew Rim, and we do a whole uh, hour set, okay. which is fun with, of all my original songs, and um, it's it's a fun time because I, I also play Disney songs okay. and. Um, yeah, and the love out here from Guam, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a lot of the whole thing is why uh, why I feel even more uh, empowered and feel more inspired to keep doing it is when I see literally kids who like look like they could be me yeah. and be my cousin mm -hmm. or you know that kid. I I love when little boys come up to me and they're like, dude. I started ukulele because mm -hmm. I was that little boy too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At one point that didn't really have an AJ to look up to or to say that to, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I had my dad who was my biggest inspiration. I had some people and I followed artists like Jason Mraz and stuff, mm -hmm. but like they didn't look like me. I couldn't, I didn't know if I could relate to them really, you know? So the fact that I can be that for some of these kids, and not not just guys like girls too you know who are like oh you make me proud to be filipino i'm so proud you know all this stuff so when i'm in guam it's cool because these kids you know they look like they could be my kids yeah. and uh and they're coming up to me all very excited so that's what i'm trying to bring on sunday as well is like you know to bring that that kind of love and passion that i had for music initially mm -hmm. hopefully one of those kids who are watching the show mm -hmm. is like yo dude this guy yeah this guy's doing it i can do it too man you know and that's the power of like representation which is a whole nother subject mm -hmm. right that like has been missing from people who look like us mm -hmm. um but i'm glad to be part of part of that you know what i mean in 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 even in the big grand picture of things in a, the smallest way mm -hmm. but hopefully it creates ripples and then these different people are inspired because of me because i was inspired by different people and yep. stuff you know so yeah that's what i'll be doing on sunday man um as far as the next time on guam you know i and i did say this back in 2014 okay. after the hiatus mm -hmm. i was like i'll be back in a year yeah. thinking mm -hmm. because it was just so amazing mm -hmm. it wasn't until three years and then it ended became, becoming five yeah. uh, but really i do feel like um because i play in the philippines a lot mm -hmm. It's like, why not just go to Guam too? It's right here. Stop, quick stop. <laughs> quick stop, yeah. man. It's just so expensive to yeah, come to Guam. Yeah, it is, dude. Why is it so expensive? Like, it's crazy, dude. Like, I was looking at flights from Hawaii to Guam. Mm -hmm. What? It's so expensive. It's a, a little bit of a monopoly here and there, man, with that. Right. Yeah. Right. There's not a ton of flights probably coming out all the time. Mm -hmm. So people are like, like united, yeah. you know, and like, there's just certain airlines. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. All right, guys, we're going to thank AJ for being on the show today. Uh, once again, this is Mentor Asia Pacific, and I'm Alvin. See yes. you guys next time. See y'all. Thanks, Alvin. Thanks, Appreciate it. Doing, Subscribe, man. guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Mentor Asia Pacific. Once again, I'm Alvin Sanga. Check out all our social media that's going to be linked down below. Stay tuned. More mentors are going to come. Uh, we're going to be releasing a mentor every week. And please, please leave a comment down below for any mentors that you'd like to be featured on the channel, any business professional, entrepreneur, or anybody that you believe is inspiring and can provide to be
be a mentor for you as well. Till next time, thank you very much. Sangha out.